Well, welcome to our Sunday evening worship service. We are so glad that you guys have joined us this evening. We'd like to invite you to stand as we open our service with 10,000 reasons. Pretty soon, we're going to have to go ahead and get up and down here. I just light up now. Oh, 
Worshiping with us, you may be seated. See if anybody says, "Doll, look at look at her, look at him." They was acting out during worship. You say that wasn't me; that was my soul. Don't be talking about my soul. Amen. Amen. This is better than any prison you'll ever go to. It's better than any jailhouse. Amen. That you ever end up in. I'm glad to be here. There's a lot of folks, amen, who are not able to be here this evening, amen. There's a lot of folks who are able to be here that's not here. But I'll promise you there's nursing homes and hospitals full of people right now, this evening, that would love to be where you are. And I ask you to please help me. Let's bind together. Let's join together and pray for them. Those folks who join on YouTube and Facebook, I know this thing's flaring back up and it's got everybody uneasy and it's a real thing and we're praying about it, amen. Some I've lost good, good friends just in the past month, two of them. And uh, we got to pray. we got to pray. I also got to trust in the Lord. I also got to trust in the Lord. And I ask you to please let's make sure that we hold on to Him and do what's right, prepare. No doubt, no doubt you, you pray, you pray, amen. And put God first. And he said, if you'll seek me first in my kingdom, he said, all these other things I'll make sure I take care of. But I, I, I do. We, we're we going to try our best to take every precaution that we need to and uh, just pray for us. Again, we don't know how far this is going to go or how, how bad it's going to get, but we're going to trust in the Lord. Amen. All the way. I'm Again, thank you for being here. The Lord has laid something on my heart, but he laid it. I, I was in the office there, amen, th and thought exactly I knew where I was going with the message again. You guys just don't realize and understand how, how you know you study, you got it on, you got it written down, you know for sure. I'm sure that I'm going to be able to preach this message sometime because he probably wouldn't have given to me the way he did. But all of a sudden, I started singing, I started having church right there in the office, amen. And he led me in a totally different way. But I do want to, I want to share with you what they were sharing without even knowing with me. And they're going to sing a few songs this evening. You don't have to stand for all of them, amen. You can be seated. But I do, I want to. I'm telling you, the Lord, the Lord was using them. And that's the way it always is. Anytime you're singing to Him and not to somebody, it's always better. It's always better. We used to make the comment when me and my brother sang and my son. Now, Don Jr. could sing. Don Jr. could sing, there's no doubt. But we'd go to churches, amen, and I'm talking about have services and people, God would be saving folks and people be encouraged and old-timey camp meeting and as we were there at the back door when people were leaving, they said, boy, y'all did, y'all sounded good. I said, there's no doubt that the Holy Ghost was in this place tonight. If you think that we sounded good, I said, there's no doubt that the Spirit of God was moving in this place. He he, he proved to, to us many, many, many times, it doesn't matter who you are. If you'll just be willing to serve, if you'll just, if you want it in your heart, if you desire in your heart, amen, to be used by the Lord, he'll do that. He'll do that. But uh, we want to we wanna go to prayer right now. Again, um, we, we're hearing almost hourly, not any more per se of our church family, our body, but we're hearing almost hourly of someone else that's, been, that's got this, this virus and uh, others that are being put on the ventilator. I'm not saying this to try to scare you. I'm saying this to tell you to pray. Pray for those folks. Pray for those folks. Uh, real quickly, anybody got a special outspoken request we could help you pray about, Miss Jesse? Amen. Yes, ma'am. Amen. We will. We will, sis. 
Please remind me of that again Wednesday. It'll be Wednesday before we put the new names into. Please remind me, go sister. Okay, thank you. Anybody else over here? How about behind me, guys? Anybody got a prayer request? Yes, ma'am. Pray for Afghanistan. What's going on there? Yeah. Let's do remember them. Amen. We do need to remember TCA. Staff and the students, amen. The families, let's do lift them up in prayer. All the schools, absolutely. Thank you, sis. Brother Russell. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All those folks that have lost loved ones. I got good news a while ago, amen, and I got a picture I'm going to share with y'all later. Yeah, my baby girl's on the way home. I don't have to tell anybody where I'm headed as soon as I leave here. I'm on a mission, amen, headed to Long, South Carolina. Just as soon as God lets me go, amen. But uh, let's pray, let's pray. Thank you again for all your prayers. There is a little something going on, amen, not going to, but uh God's able, God's going to take care of it, amen, but you just just remember our family in prayer, and uh, let's go to prayer. Would you stand with us? Brother Dennis, I'm going to ask you to lead us to the throne of grace.
Amen. You guys may be seated. Nothing 
nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes it's hard to believe he can, he can fight for us, and win, but he can. If you've been walking the same old roads, miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies, if you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life, there's a better life. But I want to thank him for being willing to run the computer and sound while I was up here singing this morning. And then for Richard tonight doing it for us. We appreciate it. And a dancing. Whole lot. And dancing. Yeah, that just dance. made it so much better. It blesses our soul. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord.
was His grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear! The hour I Chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing on the chorus of that song. My chains are gone I've been set free My God, my Savior has ransomed me And like a flood His mercy You may be seated.
Now, Lauren, I'm not going to ask to play that whole song when you do get it, that video, but uh, have you got it ready? Or I mean, is it ready or you need some time? I, that's okay. You have no idea. You don't. And she doesn't either. How much of a godsend Sister Lauren MacArthur was to this church? You hear me? I'm telling you right now. I know she don't like this. She'd rather not take any, hear any of this, but uh, you don't have to. You don't have to beg. Sometimes you don't even have to ask. If she just knows, if she can feel what you're needing or what you need help with, her, she's always she's all. And, and I'm going to tell you this, and I, I I appreciate you, and I thank you. I know it gets hard. I know you. She she got a big old heart, and sometimes it's easy to to get broken. She she's real. We need some more folks, amen, it has got compassion. That's what we need. But I mean it. I just want to say it. Thank you, and I appreciate you for all that you do. I'm going to, when she gets this thing ready, I'm going to play this first before we do. But uh, Storm, Storm sent me a, a message and a, and a picture of Josie, and uh, they're on the way home. They're probably getting close about now. To be in home. Brand new baby in a brand new home. Started thinking about that. I'm a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm going to a brand new home. See, but I'm not going to feel out of place. I'm not going to feel, when I get there, I'm not going to feel out of place. I'm not going to feel like I've never been there. I'm going to feel like I've always been there. Josie's on the way home. Storm says, Daddy, I'm driving about 10 miles an hour all the way from Charlotte. I said, well, you better speed up, bless God. You better be there when I get there. This song, this song that's about to be played was playing in the birthing room when, when she was born. And Storm sent me a note. He said, Daddy, he said, I had to share this with you. And uh, we're not going to play the whole song, but maybe the first or second verse in the chorus. And, uh, but I want you to listen to it. And grandmamas and granddads out there, you know what I'm feeling today. You know what I'm feeling. I I'm just thankful that... Uh, I'm thankful that God knows everything he sees down the road farther than we do. And in his time, everything's perfect. But this song was playing when, when Josie was born. All oh, my words fall short I've got nothing new How could I express All my gratitude I could sing these songs As I often do but every song must end And you never do So I throw up my hands And praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not my I have nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing Hallelujah Hallelujah I've got one response I've got just one more with my arms stretched wide, I will worship you. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much. I have nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing Hallelujah 
You get shy and me, lift up your soul. Cause you've got a light inside those mountains. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your soul. Cause you've got a light inside those mountains. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of the song. Get up and praise the Lord. Bible, Zechariah chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. I want to talk about some new clothes. I promise you I'm going to be as, as quick as the Lord lets me because I'm on a mission, I told you. He said, well, why'd you do all this before the mission? Because God told me to. <laughs> Brother Grady, I want to go and see her. But if I don't make it to Long's tonight, if I don't ever make it, if I if the breath leaves my body, Sister Sandra, before I get there, she'll know where to find me. Sister Gina, she'll know where granddaddy's at. My kids will know where their daddy's at, and Cindy will know where her husband is. You don't have to wonder about it. Why? How you know that, preacher? Because I got some new clothes on. So what in the world are you talking about? So you look like a mess. Your shirt tails out and all kind of. Look here. I'm telling you, when, when God looks down and sees us, He doesn't see us for what we got on. For what He He, he says, "Man, y'all sure do look good. You come in with whatever on." God says, "You sure do look good." I'm gonna prove that to you. I I, I know this, Amen, because I've been surrounded by them at the house, especially the past I don't know five years. How long's at least three years? Nothing but women and ain't got but two. Some of you's got a whole lot worse shape than I was. Women love to shop. Women love clothes. Now I got a son. Storm loves to shop. Storm's deal is shoes, though. I'm just telling you, he's got all you can. He loves sneakers. He loves dress shoes. He just loves shoes. And Cindy and I have been over at their house <laughs> several late nights lately trying to get that thing set up knowing they were coming home and we're trying to help them get in new house new baby and i said my lord where'd all these shoes come from what man in his right mind needs this many shoes <laughs> part of me says is that your son How many ladies in here love to shop? Just be honest. Go ahead. You already don't lie about it. Amen. How many men love to shop? Do you, Brother Richard? I, I like what comes from the shopping. I don't like to shop, though. I'll tell you what my favorite thing is during the shopping process is I want to thank the man or woman or whoever it was putting them couches in the middle of the mall, in those chairs. That's better than going to the movie theater. You can sit there and watch and see about anything you want to see and some things you don't want to see. I'm telling you, you'll be thankful for your children if you sit there long. 
bad as they are and as hateful as they are and as aggravating as they are, it won't take very long to watch the children coming in and out, the young people coming in and out. You'll be thankful for your kids. So I've got some things now. I'm going to try to stick to it, amen, so I can I can move on. Casey, Casey will buy. Casey will grab and she throws it in the buggy. She don't buy. She's going to find out what it's like to buy. Though. Amen. Now, it ain't. She said she sent me a note and said that her, her her husband, now Alex, had taken her car by the one of the places, all those on car quests, one of those, and they'd run that diagnostic thing on. And she it told why it, her dash looked like a Christmas tree. I said, baby, listen to me. I'm from the old school. I said, you just watch the temperature light. Watch that gauge right there. As long as that, as long as it don't get hot, you can keep getting it. But when that temperature starts rising, amen, we got to pull over and stop and find out what's wrong. She said, but what about all these lights? I said, they'll be okay. And, they, and her, but, her, but her husband took the car over and had it diagnosed and brought me back a piece of paper about that long. Yeah. Told me what it was. And I said, Why you? <laughs> what you giving that to me for? Amen. Casey loves to shop. And she, like I say, she'll find out what it's like. Cindy loves to shop, but Cindy will pick stuff up. First place she goes is to the to the, the discount rack, the clearance rack, or whatever. I mean, she'll put stuff in the buggy and she'll walk around the store for 10, 15 minutes. And I notice she'll start setting it back down, going back and putting it. I don't really need this. Idea. And that's the way she does. I want to talk to you just a little bit about, about garments, about clothes that the Bible speaks of. How many of you men got the same problem I do? I start getting ready. She said, you're not wearing that, are you? Well, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? My fishing shirts, amen. My PFG shirts and whatever this one, I don't know what this one is. I like them. You hear me? I like, this is fat boy friendly shirts. They got all kind of ventilation in them in the back, and y'all don't know that's, a, that's an actual vent back there. This, this, I love these shirts. My wife says, I'm sick and tired of seeing you in those clothes. In those, I said, well, darling, I said, the best thing I can tell you is to start buying me some different color ones because I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to wear these because I like them. They, they, they move with you, if you know what I'm saying. You, you got, this, I'm going to have to go to the next size pretty soon. Y'all pray for me. I've got to, talk, I've got to get busy because I know you said, well, Pritchard, you didn't have five songs, so i got to go. I want to talk to you just a minute about filthy garments, and I'm going to stick with this. I promise you I am. Filthy garments is the first thing I want to talk to you about. It's in the Bible. It's in, in Zechariah chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Zechariah 3, verses 3 and 4. And the Bible says, Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments, and he stood before the angel. And he answered and he spoke to those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused your iniquity to pass from you, and I will clothe you with a change of raiment. What the Lord, what the angel of the Lord's telling him, what God's telling him, says, Look, I'm fixing to give you some new clothes. Put some new clothes on you. That filthy garment. The Bible says that that's what we are. We're there's filthy rags before God. Without the blood of Jesus, when he looks down, amen. It ain't looking good, real good for us. That's a filthy garment, the first one. This dreadful garment in Psalm, in Psalm 109, verse 18. Psalm 109, verse 18 says, He clothed himself with cursing like a garment. He clothed himself with cursing like a garment. You don't have to raise your hand. And you don't even have to be male. I've seen females almost as bad and some just as bad. I, I had a filthy mouth before God saved me. I'm so glad, amen, that I don't think anybody here, I know nobody here did. You didn't know me. You didn't know me before I was saved. You say, well, preacher, it wouldn't have made any difference. It does, I promise you it does. You know, some folks will say, man, he, he should, God sure did change him. But on the other hand, there's other folks that all they remember is who you used to be. That's why Jesus couldn't do many mighty works when he went back to his hometown, Brother Mark. When he back, went back to Nazareth, they just saw him as being Joseph and Mary's boy. You remember that one that we thought he's, you know, he's born out of wedlock. They weren't even married. The rumors and all those things that he faced when he went back to Nazareth, the people that didn't believe. Some people never, ever stop seeing who you used to be. I thank God that there's some folks, amen, that don't know who you used to be, and they know the new creature. They see you in your new clothes, amen. 
Some are thankful. There's another one, an undesirable garment. In Job chapter 8, verse 22, Job 8, 22 says, They that hate you shall be clothed with shame. With shame. John eleven forty four says that Lazarus, Lazarus, John eleven forty four says that Lazarus was bound hand and foot in grave clothes. Before you were saved, before you accepted the great, great gift of grace from our Lord and Savior, every one of us were walking dead people. We were dead in our trespasses on our way to hell, amen. And on that day, just like when Jesus shouted out in that graveyard, he said, Lazarus, been dead four days, surely he's stinking by now. He can't get up if when Jesus speaks, amen, things happen. He says, Lazarus, get up. Now, I don't know, because it plainly says in the Bible, he was bound hand and foot. I don't know if he levitated out of the grave. I don't know. <laughs> I, did, I don't know how he... Uh, did he, did he shimmy out? I don't know how he got out. But I'm just telling you, it says he was bound hand and foot. And somehow, amen, he's standing outside the grave. And then Jesus says something to the people around him. Loose him and let him go. Loose him and let him go. That's what happened to me but, but, but on the day I got saved. I was bound down with chains of the devil, amen. He had me bound down. I didn't realize I was in his prison. I thought I was doing what I wanted to do when I wanted to do. I, I wasn't. It was a lie of the devil. He had me tricked and trapped, amen, in his, in his cell. And I was bound hand and foot until the day that Jesus said, let him go. <laughs> Loose him and let him go. Those are the garments, amen, the ones that we don't, we don't want to think about. We'd rather not remember. But I want to share you real quickly these garments here that God gives us. He gives us these new clothes, amen, when we join up with him. The first one you'll find in Isaiah 61.10. Isaiah 61.10. Brand new suit of clothes. Brand new suit of clothes. Isaiah 61.10 says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God because He has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has clothed me with the garments of salvation. little note I wrote down here. This is the first and no doubt the most important part or set of the new clothes that God gives us. There's some that come along with it, say, I mean, this is like one of those buy one, get one free deals, and those things, even though we didn't buy it, it was purchased on Calvary by the blood of Jesus, by the way. It's a free gift to us, amen, but the first suit, new suit of clothes that we get, Sister Pat, is this garment of salvation. And that's what it says here, plainly says that he has clothed me, clothed me with the garments of salvation. He, he swaps out those filthy rags with a brand new suit of salvation. That's a good swap. That's a good deal. You won't get that at any car lot, I promise you. You won't find that at any other place except in God's family. It says, I'll absolutely swap those old filthy rags out and give you a brand new suit of salvation. See, the world can't understand this. They can't understand how... You, do you really believe that God, if there is a God, do you really believe that He'd forgive you of all you've done? Yeah, I do. I do because he promised me. You often have people say, Preacher, do you really, really believe that? And I do. I'll make the comment and I'll tell you right now. If there is any inkling of doubt at all, I always turn back and rely to the promise. He said, Don, you're not always going to feel saved. You're not always going to feel good. You're not always going to have that joy just bubbling over all the time. He says, on they, those days, you can rely on the promise. How about this next one? The garment of humility. He's going to give us new clothes. Hey, guess what comes along with the garment of salvation? Humility. You say, well, I know folks, amen, who claim to have gotten saved, and they just... They just I, I'm just telling you, all these other pieces of clothing, these other garments, they come along with the suit of salvation. So there, if, if not, there's a disconnect. And if they're growing in Christ Jesus, we know that. Sometimes these things take a little longer than others. And other people, I was sharing with a young man just earlier today, right after service in, in one of the classrooms, wanted to talk. He said, it just doesn't seem like anything's going right. I can't do anything right. I said, buddy, there is no secret scripture. There is no set in stone prayer that I can pray with you. 
I said, you have got to continue to seek the Lord. You've got to continue to try and get it closer and closer and closer to Him. It's just like when you, that first girl, that first guy, when you crossed paths with him, and he had that little flutter, amen. You say, wow, well, what was that? And you start falling in love with them. I'll promise you, I'll promise you, and you know this to be the truth. If you would see them on the next day and they had a letter in their hand and they passed it to you, and on the outside of it, it had a heart on it or some perfume, amen. I guarantee you, you wouldn't take it home with you and throw it on the table, or you wouldn't go to your car and throw it in the back seat, amen, like we find a lot of these. You would open that love letter and see what she had to say or he had to say to you. You know why? Because you want to know more about them. You want to know where they are. You want to know who they are, amen. Because you want a relationship with them. The Savior of the world, the creator of all mankind and everything here, he's written us 66 love letters. And we don't even want to read them. There's a, this second garment is a garment of humility. The garment of humility. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 5. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 5. And all of you be subject one to another. One to another. Be subject one to another. And clothed with humility. I don't know how many of you know my pastor. My pastor, Buddy C. He's now pastor at Beaver Dam Free Will Baptist Church over in Chadburn. He's been there for many, many years now. He was at White Savannah when I got saved under his, his ministry. Preacher Buddy C is the most humble man that I've ever met in my life. I've never, I've never known anybody to be like him. I've seen a lot of folks close, a lot of folks maybe on the same, but preacher buddy's just somebody that God put in my life and allowed my path to cross with his. It made a difference in me. He's the most humble person I've ever met. I guess the, the, the hugging and the, no, I don't guess. I know it did. It all came from watching him in his ministry and growing and, I knew that he was a man of God and I wanted to do, let's just be honest, when you find someone that you know that you can see the, we can say it any way we want to, the successes or you can see, amen, how God's using him or you can see in a job that you may have and a business that you may own and you see someone doing something a little bit different and, and it's causing success to come, you're going to try to copy that. You're going to try to be like that. I'm not telling you to be like the person, amen, but God just... I watched him for years and years be that man of God, Brother Ray, that I read about. He was so humble. The lady comes up to hug him. He'll never, he'll never just reach in and hug her. He'll drop his head on her shoulder, amen, and, and lean in. When, and, and he hugs everybody, tells everybody he loves him. I was so mad at this man. He came to me when my daddy was dying in Charleston, looked at me in the hallway and said, Don, I love you. And I've been praying for you. I said, you don't love me. You don't even know me. It's because my brother goes to your church. You don't even know me. And he was so humble, Brother Mark. He did love me. I just couldn't understand it because I was lost without the Lord. When that suit of salvation is placed on the child of God, something happens inside. Your heart starts getting softer. I didn't say it happens immediately, but your heart starts getting softer. Tell you what else I've come to find. I've always been a crybaby ever since God saved me. The older I get, amen, I'm telling you, the irrigation system just seemed like that. Brother Grady, I know you too. Old fellow told me one time, he said, I said, cry all the time. Cry. He said, son, he said, if you turn the irrigation system off, the crop will die. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Just mentioned to Brother Ray, you know why grandkids are, and here I am trying to be a professional already, but I've got a whole two days under my belt. I, I, but already, I already know. I already know why grandkids mean so much. We didn't have time or we didn't take time with ours. I don't mean that wrong. We did what we could do and what we thought was right. Amen. And, and, but we had to work. We had to go. We had to pay the bills. And, and, and we just didn't take the time. And as you get older, you realize, amen, how precious time is. As I look around, there's, there's only maybe a few, maybe a few that's got more time ahead of them than they have behind them. I know that I got less time ahead of me than I got behind me, and many of you know the same thing. Time becomes a whole lot more precious now. 
And that's why grandkids are so special. Because now you finally got time, or you finally going to, you're, it doesn't matter if you still got a full time job, you're working wide open, amen. You know now that you must take time. People say, well, I'm going to make some time. You're not going to make any, any time. God's already made all the time he's going to make, amen. Time's already made. I have to take time. I got to take time. We've got to humble ourselves, amen. I know that had nothing to do with humility, this garment of humility here. This is a great exchange of clothing right here. It's exchange the garment of cursing for the garment of humility. Swap out pride for, for passion. Humility ranks very, very high on God's scale, amen. Not as much as on man's scale, and we're wrong before, because it, but God holds humility at a very, very high standard. He even said that when the Pharisees and the Sadducees were talking, amen, and they trying to get in on him, and the, the disciples, they were asking all this. He said, look, he said, you see these children over here? He said, you've got to humble yourself as a child in order to get to heaven. You've got to be like a little child in order to get to heaven. With the, with, the, with the suit of salvation, he sends a garment of humility and say, Preacher, I just have not arrived there yet. We need to be praying. We need to be praying because we could all do. We could all do. I could do much better than I do, do with my humility. How about the garment of righteousness? The garment of righteousness. Psalm 132 verse 9. Psalm 132 verse 9. The garment of righteousness. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. He ain't talking about me. You are a high priest. God said you were. Jesus said you were. He said, now that you're saved, born again on your way to heaven, amen, you've been washed in the blood, we are now priests. It is our job to share this with other people. It is our job to carry this, carry this good news, this gospel to a lost and dying world. You, yes, you and me are priests. And then it says here that the priests be, are clothed with righteousness. Again, again, what a great exchange of clothing here. You change out a garment of shame for a garment of righteousness. God wants his children to be clothed in righteousness. Uh, some notes here. Say, he wants us to live our lives as right as possible. I don't know in 2021 what's wrong with living right. Why can't we just live right? Well, you said it this morning. Living right's easy. Living right's simple, but it's not easy. It's simple, but it's not easy. A lot of things are simple. They're simple answers to, but they're not easy. This garment of righteousness. Our practice, some notes will put down. Our, our practice should correspond with our profession. What I practice, my deeds, amen, ought to correspond with what I'm professing. If I claim to be right with God, saved on my way to heaven, child of the king, amen, what I'm doing during the day should match up with that. Amen. Amen. He wants my actions to agree with my words. Put on the garment of, of righteousness. Not your righteousness, not my righteousness. The righteousness of God is free. It comes along with the suit of salvation. He says, I'm a, look, I don't know what you call it, a shirt, pair of pants, socks. I don't care which article of clothing you'd like to, to match up with this one, amen. But it's another garment that God gives us when we get saved. These new clothes we're walking around in. We don't even realize it a lot of times. How about this last one? This garment of victory. The garment of victory. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 5. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 5 says, He that overcomes, he that overcomes, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. I'm telling you, my heart is a mess these past few weeks. That thing's been squeezed and the juice runs out of my eyes. It had been happening all for two weeks solid. I saw Casey, amen, when she came down that ramp at Adelaide. I've always had a beautiful girl. You, your kids are beautiful. You know what I'm talking about. I'd never seen her as beautiful as I did on that day, except maybe the day she was born. And really, all I saw was a little girl coming down those steps in a big old bridal gown. That's what I saw. I'm going to tell you, there's coming a day. There's coming a day when we get home to heaven and Jesus is going to be the bridegroom. 
He's going to be standing there as we walk down the streets of gold on that day of coronation. My goodness. And he looks, he doesn't see a bride that's spotted. He doesn't see all the sin in our lives anymore. He doesn't see those ugly, nasty, filthy rags. All he sees is his beautiful bride. And we're going to go to the marriage supper of the land and we're going to take off for eternity. Eternity is a long time to be wrong, guys. You got to have on the right kind of clothes to stand before the king. In order to have audience with the king, you got to dress right. I'm going to go back and read that scripture, but I'm going to read verses 1 through 5 in the book of Revelation, chapter 3. Revelation, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, and I'm done. God might not be, but I am, until he tells me to go further. Revelation, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. I want you to think of this. I want you to liken this to our church, to this church, to our home, to us as individuals. And to the angel of the church in Sardis, write these things. Says he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. This is Jesus we're talking about. He says, I know your works. I know your works. That you have a name that you are alive, but really you're dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. There are things in the church today. I'm not just talking about here. Talking about in our homes. Talking about in our personal lives. Talking about we, anything you want to go with here. There are things that are about re, almost dead. Almost dead unless we do something. Unless we encourage one another. Unless, unless we ask God to come in and, and, and help us. Amen. Those things that we've allowed to die. A little thing at a time. This is gone. That's gone. I mean you can look around. You remember what church was like when you were younger. And think about those things, amen, that, that held people together in fellowship, that made folks stronger, that encouraged one another that you no longer have, that we no longer have now. Little by little, they're dying away. And that scripture plainly says here, he says, I know your works and you've got a name that you're alive, but you're dead. Be watchful and strength, th strengthen the things which remain, those that you got left that are ready to die. For I have not found your works to be perfect before God. Remember what you have received and heard and hold fast to it. Repent. If you don't watch, I will come on you as a thief. And you shall not know what hour I come on you. You have a few names. You have a few people even in Sardis which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me <laughs> in white. For they are worthy. Are you kidding me? This is Jesus talking. You understand this? This is Jesus talking to the churches here in Revelation. This is Jesus' words. You know what he's saying about you and me? He says, you are worthy. You are worthy now to come to my heaven. You're worthy, Brother Mormon. Sister Gina, you're worthy. That's the very last thing that I would ever put under my name or by my name that I'm worthy. But because God does not see Don, He does not see us anymore, amen. He sees His Son's blood. Jesus says, you're not worthy. Because those, why? Because those new clothes you're wearing. I saw God see it. He said, look at my crowd down there. Don't they look good? Even in our faults and our failures and all that mess. See, God doesn't see that anymore. The Holy Spirit reminds us daily we need to get better. We need to get back on track and do right. But when God looks, He doesn't see all that. He just sees Jesus. Aren't you, aren't you thankful for that? You have a few names, people among you, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcomes the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Why do I get to have all this with the king? It's because of my new clothes. 
It's called my new suit, amen. So you don't look like much to me. It don't matter what it looks like to you, amen. God, see, He gives a brand new, give everyone, if you're here and you're saved, you got a brand new suit of clothes. Brand new so the world can't see it, amen. We need to try to help them see it. We need to live this life in humility and love. So why? Why do I get audience with the king? Why am I going to be allowed into heaven? Because I got the right kind of clothes on. If you don't have those garments on this evening, as I look around, I don't know anybody's heart, but as far as I know, everybody here is saved. Maybe, maybe you need to talk to him about something. Maybe you just need to respond to him in some way. Maybe you know someone in your, in your family that you need to pray for. And I want you to take this time. Will you stand with me? Without any singing, without any play, just pick something, Sister Lauren. Just pick something and play just for a second. You can just let it play in the background. But if you need this altar for any reason, any reason whatsoever, if you just want to talk to him, thank him, amen. If you've got a family member that you know good and well needs prayer, you got a family member that you know that they die right now. If they die this evening, that they're not going to heaven, that you don't believe they're going to heaven. You can't tell it by their fruit. You need to pray for them. I'm so thankful that somebody prayed for me. They didn't give up on me. Miss Pat, somebody prayed for you over and over and over. You might not even know who it was. Amen. One day we'll know when we get home to heaven, but somebody's prayed for everybody in here. That's the only reason we're here. Brother Greg can tell you about them, them good old ladies, them dear old precious saints. Amen. Up in the mountains, been praying for him all of his life. He knows that. So maybe it's somebody else you need to pray for. And I ask you right now, you can go ahead and start that, Sister Lauren. If you need to pray, we'd love to pray with you. Father, I love you and I thank you for your goodness, Lord. God, during this time of response, Lord, right now, I thank you for a good day. Lord, I try to wrap my mind around. I try to imagine, especially just coming out of a wedding, Lord. As I saw Alex standing up there, God, in my mind, I think back right now, Lord, I can picture you and you're just waiting on us, God, as we come and we walk into heaven, Lord, on that day. The heaven that you allowed us to come to, Lord, you gave your life for us that we could attend this wedding, God, that we could be the bridegroom. God, and you look at us, you think that we're the most beautiful thing that's ever been made. You said everything else was good when you made it, Lord. You finally made us. You looked at it and said, that's very good. God, we can't see that, Lord. We know we're a mess. But I sure am thankful, God. I'll never be able to thank you enough for the blood. The blood that you shed, God, that made me accepted in the eyes of God. Lord, I need you. I need you more today than I've ever needed you in my life. And I pray, God, right now for every person in this place. They say, call on you, Lord. They say, they say, seek your face. I pray, God, that you meet every need. Help us as we go back to work tomorrow, to school, God, wherever it may be, God, that you, that you have us called to. I pray that we would be an encouragement. I pray that we'd be a light in the dark place. And Lord, one more thing before I say amen. Lord, thank you for the new suit of clothes. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Anybody got anything on your heart? Just let it play, Sister Lord. Anybody got anything on your heart? I hope you have a good week. I hope you have a great week in the Lord. I pray that when that person that you cross paths with this week, that you'll know, that you'll know that they're the ones that God wants you to talk to. That you'll know without a doubt they're the ones. See, you don't have to, you don't have to worry. You don't have to say, well, I'm not, I don't have the boldness, preacher, I just don't. But if God allows you to pass the cross, you can, already, you can depend on it. He's already talked to them. He needs you to do your part now. Maybe no more than saying, I love you, I've been praying for you. Hey, we'd like to invite you to church. Whatever God lays on your heart, just remember that he's already gone before you. Anybody? All right, we're going to be dismissed. Pray for the folks who aren't here, guys. Uh, again, a lot of folks reporting that they have tested positive for uh, COVID. Like, again, no more in our immediate church family. It's families and friends of other folks. And we will try to keep you up there. It's not like we're going to try to hide it. We're going to do everything we can possible to make sure everything's clean. That's why the school's not going to be open tomorrow. They're coming in and, and they're going to sanitize throughout just so we can try to get out ahead of this thing. 
Pray for one another. Nothing else. We're going to be dismissed. Miss Faith.